What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Jackson. Division round was a little bit more crazy than the wild card round and honestly it doesn't make any sense. Power's here and yes as you guys guessed we are talking about the NFL divisional round. Now I made predictions uh, for these. I went two and two with my predictions. Uh, we'll get into the overall record at the end of this but I just want to get into the games real quick. We're going to go in chronological order as they happened. So you'll see how every game played out in case you missed them. And if you missed them, then how did you miss them? You must live under a rock. But the first game that took place of Divisional Round Weekend was the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. The Jags coming off of the third largest comeback in NFL playoff history against the Chargers and the Chiefs were on a bye, and <clears throat> this game, right out the gate, looked like it was going to be a blowout. I mean, the Chiefs drove right down the field and scored on Jacksonville after forcing a three and out. But then the Jags answered, made it 7-7, seven to seven, and then the next drive, Mahomes got hurt. He got his ankle rolled up on, ended up being a high ankle sprain, but he kept playing, and uh, he led him to a field goal on that drive. And then after that, Chad Henney came in for a drive and went 98 yards, scored a touchdown. And at that point, I knew that uh, the Chiefs were winning that game because if the Jags can't stop Chad Henney, then they don't have a chance. So after that, the Jags kicked a field goal before halftime. The score at halftime was 17-10. to 10. And then in the second half, Mahomes was able to come back out there, and he did his thing. He played decently because Mahomes on one leg is still better than most quarterbacks on two legs. And uh, it was pretty back and forth in the second half, but... The Chiefs end up getting it done 27-20, to 20, and it was a pretty good game. Uh, I think if Mahomes was healthy the whole time, it probably would have they probably would have won by at least two scores. I think Jacksonville would have been able to keep up because Jamal Agnew had a couple nice kick returns, but they just weren't able to keep up. And Jamal Agnew was ultimately one of the reasons they lost the game because he fumbled on a very critical drive, which they probably would have scored on and would have had a chance to score again because they did get the ball back, but... You know, at the end of the day, they couldn't get it done. The Jags are too young, and they just weren't ready for that moment yet. The Chiefs had been there. They had the experience on their side. And I think the Jags, they're going to be a very dangerous team in the next coming years because they got a lot of young talent. They got a good quarterback, and they got a good head coach. They got a pretty bright future. And honestly, I'm pretty scared to play them twice a year being a Colts fan. So... It was a pretty good game, and Jacksonville, y'all really don't have anything to be ashamed about. Because, I mean, y'all weren't even really supposed to be in the playoffs in the first place. And y'all won the division, made the playoffs, and won a playoff game. So, y'all don't have anything to be ashamed about. But the Chiefs moved on to the AFC Championship game. And the next game that happened on Saturday was the Philadelphia Eagles versus the um, New York Giants. And... I think the only way to recap it is like this. Because that's basically what the Eagles did to the Giants. I mean, they won 38 to they won 38 to 7. It wasn't anywhere near a close football game. The Eagles are just too good. The Giants are a long way away from being legit contenders, but they got a good start with Brian Dayball as their head coach. He is very good as a head coach because this Giants team is not a playoff team, but somehow he dragged it into the playoffs. And, you know, they weren't supposed to be there either, so we all really don't have anything to be ashamed about. Y'all won a playoff game after making the playoffs, upset the Minnesota Vikings, but then got boat raced by the Eagles because the Eagles just – all around are just better than the Giants. They got better quarterback, better receivers, better defense. Pretty much better everything, really. The only the only area that the Giants have over the Eagles is their running back. But, I mean, the Eagles shut Saquon down, it, and they dominate. It was just pure dominance by the Eagles. So, Eagles won 38-7, and they will host the NFC Championship game next week. And now we're going to move on to Sunday. So the first game on Sunday at 3 p.m. was the Buffalo Bills hosting the Cincinnati Bengals. And a game that we all thought was going to be close, competitive, and the Bengals straight up exposed the Buffalo Bills. Now, I mean, it was just, it was 
I don't know. And Buffalo Bills fans are making every excuse in the book. Injuries, uh, the snow. Y'all should have thrived in the snow. But, I don't know. The Bengals just were the better team. The Bengals did win by 17. But the way that game went, they should have won by like 30. I mean, it was just pure dominance all around. And, like, the Bengals in the first quarter scored 14 points right off the get-go. But the Bills answered. But the Bengals got a field goal, and it was pretty much all downhill from there, really. Uh, the Bills only were able to score another field goal. The Bills scored 10 points at home in a playoff game, and the Bengals were just too much for them. The Bengals' defense was way better than the Dolphins' defense, and the Bills' defense is so much worse than the Ravens' defense. I think that's why that Ravens game was so close last week, because... The Ravens have a pretty good defense, and the Bills just don't. Like, their defense, when fully healthy, is good, but it wasn't fully healthy, and that was a big part. That was a big difference in this game. They just, the Bills got exposed, and I'm going to say it right now. I know I'm going to hurt a lot of Bills fans, but Joe Burrow is better than Josh Allen. I hate to break it to you. I mean, Joe Burrow has proven time and time again that he can win in the playoffs, and Josh Allen just hasn't done that yet, you know? He I mean, he's – like, he's – I don't know. He reminds me – he's going to be a lot like Peyton Manning, I think. Have great regular seasons but have struggles in the playoffs. and Or like Rodgers, too. Win a lot in the regular season but struggle in the playoffs. It's going to it's gonna be interesting to see. But, yeah, as of right now, Joe Burrow's the better quarterback. And I think – it's it's not that crazy of an argument to make. I mean, he's Josh Allen has a lot to work on. He has great arm strength. It's just his accuracy has always been a question. And it's it doesn't help when your receivers are dropping passes either. And just the snow didn't help anything at all. And I don't know. The Bills, they got some things to talk about in the offseason for sure because they were the Super Bowl favorite and they got bounced in the divisional round. So, the Bengals are moving on to the AFC Championship to take on the Kansas City Chiefs next week in Arrowhead, which I was glad that the Bengals won, so now we don't got to worry about any of the neutral site crap, and the NFL won't get any ideas because it's going to take place in Arrowhead. And the last game of the weekend was the 49ers taking on the Dallas Cowboys, and that was a defensive game, but it was a fun defensive game. You know, the Cowboys defense showed up. The 49ers defense showed up. Both defenses played great. Purdy kind of looked like a rookie a little bit in this game. He was running for his life back there. He was making a lot of poor decisions, but it didn't really end up affecting him in the end. But he was getting frustrated, and like his coaching staff had to go over there and tell him, it's all right, you know, not every decision is going to be a good one. They got to go out there and make something happen and just be patient because Purdy showed why he's a rookie. He was getting frustrated, and I feel like that could hurt them next week, but we'll see. But they got it done because the Cowboys, on the last play of the game, when they were down by seven, they ran the worst play I've ever seen. They had Ezekiel Elliott line up at center, and then no one else – was blocking they had the linemen lined up outside to block for the receivers because they were going to try laterals but they were banking on the fact that the Niners weren't going to pass rush but the Niners pass rushed and Dak had to get a quick pass out there to Turpin and Turpin got absolutely leveled and that was how the game ended and we saw the real Dak Prescott I've defended Dak Prescott for a long time but I just can't anymore Dak Prescott is not a good quarterback I mean, he's had every opportunity to prove himself. He played well last week, but that was against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who were very, very bad. And it I don't know. It just wasn't it just wasn't good. And I there was a part of me that wanted the Cowboys to win just so T. Y. Hilton go, could go get a ring, but I don't know. Dak Prescott, he's not the answer. He is not worth his contract. And Cowboys fans hype him up way too much. He needs to be like he needs some. He needs something to happen because honestly, he might not even be the best quarterback on his own team. Cooper Rush may be better than him. I'm not one of the people that think Cooper Rush is better than Dak, but Dak is not the superstar quarterback that a lot of people think he is. So, 
I think the Cowboys in the offseason are going to do a lot of thinking, and we'll see what happens there. But the 49ers are moving on to take on the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFC Championship game in Philadelphia. So next week, the conference championship games will be the, the Eagles and the 49ers in the early game for the NFC, and then in the late game, it's the Chiefs and the Bengals in the AFC, which is a rematch of last year. I mean, we got three of we got three of the teams that were in the conference championship last year, and at this year, the only team that isn't is the defending champions somehow. So, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be incredibly interesting to see. Uh, tune in on Friday for my prediction video. I like to do the prediction videos on Fridays because that's when we know the most news and stuff. So stay tuned for that. I don't know what the video on Wednesday is going to be yet. But right now, after this week, my uh, playoff predictions are at 6-4. and four. I went 2-2 two and two this week. So it wasn't great. Hopefully next week I can go 2-2, two for two, but we'll see. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And turn on the bell notifications. And follow everything in the description box. See you guys next time. Bye.